We do see that uh, the energy stocks do pretty well, but at the same time, we see the likes of the, the healthcare sector as well certainly outperforming. I mean, no, there's no obvious sort of uh, trend, if you like, to trade at the moment. There hasn't been an obvious trend in terms of sector performance, but I guess in terms of risk assets, there's one key driver of markets at the moment, and that's hopes over a Greece solution. Now, these hopes are driving uh, the risk rally that we're seeing, not only around the region, but also in terms of currencies. And if we have a look at currency movements, we have seen strength in the euro, which has seen the Australian dollar versus the US currency reaching a seven-month high overnight at 108.3 US cents. So that's had an impact in terms of commodities prices which are mainly driven uh, and traded in US dollar terms so commodities doing very well if we have a look at our market today and equities it's been the best day of 2012 and that's because of volumes going through the market we actually saw five billion dollars worth of stock being traded today and that means for 2012 it's the best volume day once you strip out those expiry uh, related derivatives expiry related uh, volume day so extremely good volume going through the market and if we have a look at where the index uh, finished up the ASX 200 a touch under 4300 points and that means that we're not too far away from that 200 day moving average at 4318 points in fact it looks like brokers even getting more bullish on the market we saw Goldman Sachs readjusting their half-year and end-of-year targets for the ASX 200, raising uh, the June uh, target by 6% uh, to 4,340 points and the end-of-year target up by 2.2% to 4,500 points. But I guess that high Australian dollar also having an impact on stocks and unfortunately not good news for stocks like News Corporation as well as QB Insurance, which did uh, finish the day lower. But altogether, a good day for the market, some strong volumes going through and you know that earnings season is in full swing when you have the biggest stock on our market BHP Billiton coming out with its result. I want to talk about that Goldman's uh, adjustment to the forecast for the for the ASX 200 in just a moment before that we do that Julia what do you put the big surge in volumes down to because I mean it certainly has been light on for quite some time I mean is it the fact that we are getting earnings season and BHP reporting today did we see a lot of flow through on that stock I mean, what do you put it down to? We have seen some offshore volumes coming into the market and not surprising given that we are seeing the biggest stock on the Australian market being traded. And if you have a look at offshore uh, investors, mainly they only tr uh, trade uh, the key seven stocks on the Australian market. That's the big four banks, Rio Tinto, BHP Billiton, as well as Newcrest Mining. So we have seen some strong volumes coming into BHP because of that profit result and also coming into some other key stocks as well. The energy sector has been a key benefit Fishery. In fact, if we have a look at stocks like Woodside Petroleum, Origin Energy, up by more than 2%. But not only that, in the financial space, we've seen stocks like Macquarie as well as Suncorp gaining more than 3%. So it certainly mm. does look like there has been quite a bit of interest in the market. Some offshore buying as well, not surprising given BHP has come out with its results. But certainly quite a bit of activity on the market today. Jump the corporate news out today. And of course, there was uh, with third day into uh, reporting season. We're going to talk about BHP Billiton a little bit later. Uh, one of the other major stories, I suppose they weren't reporting, Julia, but certainly uh, they shot the lights out in terms of uh, share performance today. Guns, uh, they closed up 36%, but at one point up over 50%. Uh, the pulp mill potentially back on track. They're getting a big investor. <laughs> What more could you want for a company like Guns uh, with Knight in Shining Armour, aka uh, Richard Chandler, coming in as a cornerstone investor and hoping to get the Bells Bay pulp mill up and running? Now, I guess this is so attractive because if you have a look at the future of Guns, for the last few years we've been talking about uh, that the future of exporting isn't really in chips, which has an extremely high water content, which means that a lot of the cost of exporting has to do with exporting water. So this pulp mill is about extracting the water through drying uh, these chips into pulp um, and if you have a look that's a much more attractive proposition for a company like uh, Gun. So hopes around this Be Bell Bay uh, pulp mill really driving this stock but if we have a have look at the capital raising that was announced today 280 million dollars it's absolutely huge for a company like Guns. Yesterday the market capitalization was just over 100 million dollars a 280 million dollar capital raising with Richard Chandler taking 150 million dollars of that $75 million through a convertible bond issue and then the rest of it through, uh, through the same issue price as the capital raising at 12 cents effectively means that this could be a, a change of control transaction. So all in all, I guess Gunn's really reacting to that knight in shining armor, uh, Richard Chandler, billionaire, cornerstone investor and now AKA white 
knight in uh, knight in shining armor coming to help our gun shares today up by 36 percent by the end of the session you'd have to think there are probably a few other companies out there hoping for their own uh, billionaire to come along not just it's seemingly epl uh, english premier league soccer teams julia we saw while you were talking a a yearly chart the uh, the price chart for the the gun share price and it doesn't make for, for pretty reading we've got it up on screen at the moment and it is a rather steady decline from around about a 50 cent market Q1 2011. There was a slight uptick uh, towards the end of 2011 before dragging down again. Look, is this a game changer in your opinion for guns? You mentioned the, uh, the chip exporting, as you say, not exactly the long-term solution for them. That very much let rest with the pulp mill. Um, but are there still question marks over them? And would you be buying in at these levels? If you're buying in at these levels, you're really buying in to hope that this uh, pulp mill in Tasmania will get up and running. And if we have a look at the share price for guns, it has been a rocky road. In fact, if we go back and look at a five-year chart for guns, this is what it looks like. So this is since 2007, where we saw the shares peaking at just above $3.60 back in 2007, and now they're facing a capital raising at $0.12. Cents. Part of the problem is the high Australian dollar. This is a company that does export, so the high Australian dollar does mean that it makes it difficult to export on that global stage so it is competing with cheap imports um, and cheap products coming out of the likes of China and that has been uh, a key problem for the company they're looking at the sale of assets and of course that massive debt burden 580 million dollars worth of debt and they're going to use these capital raising funds 280 million dollars to pay down this debt to a much more sustainable level but it is hopes that this pulp mill will get up and running that's really driving the share price which is up 36 percent today. Yeah, massive, massive day for the gunship.